Hi Notion is Today I'm going to talk you through the five reasons why you should consider using Make and not Zapier for your Notion automations. And the reason I'm making this video is most of the companies that I work with use Zapier. They're a better known service and the tool integrates well with lots of apps. But Notion Zapier integration has a lot of shortcomings. You can't access relations or files in Zaps and your options for triggering automations are quite limited. When you compare Zapier to Make, which was previously known as Integromat, you also discover that it's much easier to use Make to manage several different scenarios within the same automation and in most cases makes a lot easier to use. So in this video, I'm gonna explain those limitations in more detail, show you some demos of uh, how they look when you're using the different automation tools and share some previews of Make's functionality so that you can make an informed decision about which is the better tool for you. If you decide to try Make out, I'd appreciate it if you could click through to their site using the affiliate link that's in the description for this video to help support my work, even if you're not planning to subscribe. But whether I had that link or not, I'd still be recommending Make over Zapier. The main reason I'm recording this video is so that I can share it with my clients when they ask me which tool is better. As far as I'm aware, the only significant benefit that Zapier has versus Make is it's the more intuitive tool to use. Make exposes more of the technical complexity when it comes to managing automations, whereas Zapier hides some of it in the background. So in the same way that learning to use Notion takes longer than learning to use Google Docs, it'll probably take you longer to do some things for the first time in Make. But it's worth that upfront investment of your time because once you've got the hang of Make, you'll run into less limits when setting up your automations and probably save some money as well. So let's get stuck in. Let's start by taking a look at the process for setting up an automation to create some new tasks and relate them or link them to a particular project. So here we've got two databases, our projects database and our task database. And you can see that there's this project relation right here. So if we open up our make automation, which is basically just a very simple automation, just a single step here, it's scheduled to run every Monday at midnight and we open up this uh, trigger for the automation here. Um, this is actually the only step that we need in the automation for this kind of recurring task. And basically uh, we're just populating the properties here for uh, with the details for the task. So we're preparing for our Monday meeting, assigning the task to myself, uh, setting the due date to nine hours from now, which would be nine hours after midnight uh, each Monday. And then Crucially, we have this uh, relation property here, which is the relation that links our tasks to our projects. And so we can select the particular project that we want to uh, link this task to. Um, if we had fed in the ID of a project in an earlier step in this automation, then we could also just switch on this mapping option um, and enter the ID of that project in this field. Um, so you basically have complete flexibility when it comes to linking together pages from different databases. If we go into Zapier now, and we have a look at this automation. This has a trigger which is based on a new database item being added in Notion. Doesn't really make a difference what the trigger is in this instance because the second step is the important one. And then we're using the task database again, same values for each of these different properties. But as you can see here, there is no visibility even of the relation property um, which we would want to populate to link this task to a project. So not only uh, can you not populate relation properties in Zapier automations, uh, you can't even view them or reference them um, to pull in information uh, from those properties if you needed to. I have a feeling that one of the reasons why Zapier supports fewer types of database properties is because they've been slower to update their platform whenever Notion's updated their API. So when Notion's API first launched for testing, you couldn't access relation properties through the API, but, and this gives you a sense of how slow Zapier has been here, they've added support for relations about a year ago, uh, and now you can both update and view the contents of relation properties um, in Make. 
So Zapier have some serious catching up to do here, which I will also show you uh, when we get to the next item in just a minute. And just to explain why you would want this functionality at all, um, obviously there's a few common use cases for it. You might want to link new tasks to projects as I've just explained. Uh, you might also want to link new contacts to companies and you might want to link new meetings to contacts for example. So those are just a few examples. There's obviously lots more, um, but I'm sure you can see how important that is. If we run this automation just so that you can see it in action, uh, we can manually run it now rather than waiting until midnight on Monday next week. And if we go back into our page, then we can see uh, this task has just been created here and that is linked to this project. You can see uh, that task displayed right there in this view as well. So works just as you would expect, super simple. All right, next, let's say you want to send a tweet from your social media content calendar in Notion and you want to include an image in that tweet. As a general rule, I'd recommend storing the image in a Fasa Media property type to make it easier to work with. So one with this type right here. But unfortunately, if you do, you won't be able to access that file in Zapier. Whereas in Make, you can download the file from Notion servers and attach it to your tweet. So if we have a look at that now, first of all, we can go into Zapier, got a new database item in Notion as our trigger. So this would be a new page being added to our social media calendar database. And we would want to create a tweet in Twitter uh, which uses the content of that database page as the contents of our tweet. So we could map the page title um, to this property, so something like that. And then um, we do have uh, an option here to fetch the image, video or GIF um, for our tweet from our source. But obviously Zapier doesn't know that Notion is the source of our automation here. Um, and so when we actually click in and we view the list of properties that are available to us from that Notion uh, page that triggered the automation, we don't see the file option there, unfortunately. If we go into make, then again, we're watching database items in Notion. And here we're just fetching the file using a HTTP request, which sounds a little bit complicated, but it's actually as simple as referencing that property uh, from our first step here. And then we can create our tweet. And you can see here that again, we're using the title of the page as the content for our tweet. And we're uploading an image and just choosing this uh, file, which we fetched in the second step as the image for our tweet. So if I hit run on this automation now, and that's just gonna take a second to send our tweet, that should have sent a lovely looking tweet from my Twitter account right there. Moving on, often when we set up a an automation uh, initially, it will be designed to handle a single step-by-step -step process where an item gets added to my calendar, for example, and I want to send it to Notion. But after a while, you'll want to handle different processes within the same automation. So you might want to feed updates to calendar events into Notion as well. If you set up your automation in Zapier, you can't simply add a path action midway through your Zap's actions. So here we have our Zapier automation and it's triggered by new database item being added to Notion. Uh, we want to update a database item in Notion here and you can see that I've inserted another step in between these two uh, steps. Um, and if I wanted to add a path now, like this, you can see path groups is only available on the last step of a zap or a path. So basically, if we had configured lots of steps here, um, we would have to delete these, then add our path, recreate those steps and then recreate them again so that we can uh, add them to our second path um, 
and obviously make any modifications to that second set of steps uh, to fit that new scenario. Paths let you define the criteria for each different path and then the actions that will be completed when the criteria is met. So to use the calendar events example, you would check whether the calendar event is new or if it's been updated. If it's new, you'd create a new database item in your Notion database and populate it with the event's details. But if the event's been updated, then you search for the calendar event in your Notion database and then you would update that. So you need to delete the action in your zap and recreate it inside your path. Obviously that's pretty simple if you have a single uh, step um, after your trigger, but if you have a more complicated zap with multiple steps, you're gonna have to use the, some of those same steps for each of your paths. And doing that can be quite time consuming, especially as it's not possible to copy and paste actions. If you set your automation up in Make, then adding paths to your automation is much easier. You can use a router. So to go back to the automation that we were working with a second ago, which sends a tweet, if we click in between uh, those two steps and add a router just there, now we can click that router, select LinkedIn as our example, and we can create a post. So if we wanted to add some logic to our scenario here and say if the channel in the Notion database is set to Twitter, then send a tweet. But if it's set to LinkedIn, then create a LinkedIn post. We can do that. There's no need to recreate anything at all. Um, and obviously, if we did want to reuse some of the actions here, so let's say we wanted to create a LinkedIn post uh, and send a tweet, then we could clone this module and just add it to the end of this uh, path as well um, so that we can do both and reuse the same uh, configuration that we had here um, as part of this scenario right there. This is a big time saver and it saves you from having to remember what you set up the first time around. Next up, if we go back to our Notion document, you have a lot more triggers or update options which you can use to trigger your scenario and kick off your automations. So here we've just got two simple screenshots of uh, your options um, when you're creating a scenario in Zapier and in Make. And you can see here uh, the only option that we have for triggering an automation in Zapier is it will be triggered when a new database item is added to a database. Whereas if we open this screenshot, you can see that we have a few different options here. We have the same option to trigger our automation when a database item is created, but we can also watch databases and pages to see when they have been created or updated, um, and also trigger our automation when page contents is created. Again, when Notion's API was first released, it only supported database pages, but now they've updated the API and so we have these additional options. To be honest, this isn't functionality that I use that often, but it's reassuring to know that the option's there if I ever need it, particularly as Notion continues to evolve. You can also use Make to check whether a database item has been updated. It's not a great solution for checking whether a particular property has been updated to match certain criteria though, you will want to use an automation tool called the gist for that, which is just the gist.so. But it can be useful to have that option there as well. Lastly, if we head down to the last set of screenshots in the post, and we can open these in a slightly bigger window, we've got a comparison of Zapier and Make's pricing from screenshots that I took on the 10th of September, 2022, with different colored circles highlighting different components of the pricing structure uh, that match up with each other. So for example, you can see here on Zapier's free plan, you have 100 tasks a month. If you're signed up to Make's free plan, you have 1000 operations per month. Basically tasks and operations are different steps in an automation. So obviously you get significantly more uh, from Make. Then if we have a look at the first step of the pay plan for Zapier, we have up to 750 tasks versus 
10,000 uh, for make. So again, far, far better. You can create up to 20 zaps as part of their introductory pay plan, whereas you have an unlimited number of active scenarios that you can set up from make. Then if we compare the pricing, uh, it's £43.54 uh, a month, um, to use an English currency unfortunately there, um, versus uh, £9 a month if you want to get to use custom logic or paths, um, which I talked about in the third uh, point of this video. Um, Whereas there is no uh, limit in terms of uh, when you can start adding logic to your make scenarios, uh, you can use them from the very beginning. So you will have to pay significantly more uh, if you do want to add logic to your Zapier scenarios. So there may be situations where Zapier does end up being the cheaper option, but I haven't uh, kind of spotted any obvious examples yet. So I hope that gives you a good sense of the differences between those two tools. Please don't forget to use the affiliate link in the description if you want to try out Make. If you need my help with setting up automations in Notion with Make or with Zapier, I know it can be difficult to switch away once you have started using a particular automation tool. You can get in touch with me on my website, anotioneer.com forward slash consulting and stick around because I'm sure I'll be making plenty of video guides in the future using Make so that you can get an even better sense of how the automation tool works.